So, all right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about dogs marking and marking behaviors and what that may be. Um, this was actually a request by a Facebook group that I'm in. Um, so I'm always looking for people to tell me what it is that you want to hear, what it is that videos you want me to do, or blog articles that you want me to do as well. Um, after this post is live, I am going to go ahead and in the description, I'm going to do a little bit of an update because um, I did write a blog post to go along with, with this um, Facebook Live. Um, so I'll go ahead and embed this into that post and put that link up there probably like 10 minutes after after I'm done talking. Um, but what I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about dogs marking, um, why dogs mark and what we can do about it. What are some common reasons dogs mark? Because obviously we don't know everything. We never we never will know everything in that little dog's mind. Um, and it was sprung on about people were asking me about senior dogs marking all of a sudden. So we're going to go ahead and, and address that a little bit as well. Um, so if you have any questions, you can feel free to type them into the comments, whether it's during me chit-chatting or at the end. Um, <clears throat> if you have questions at the end, I'll go ahead and, and try to answer them. Um, if not, I will obviously monitor this page and, and monitor what people are asking. But then you will have to forgive me for whatever reason. I think it's because I'm going to Novi Pet Expo on Friday. My voice decided it wants to leave me. So hopefully that won't be a bit too big of a, a deal. So, all right. So the question, why do dogs mark? Um, dogs are always trying to communicate things with each other and one of those things that people ask me a lot about are dogs barking and dogs marking <laughs> and dogs humping. So those are three things that we get a lot of, of questions about and they're all different ways for dogs to let us know something or let other dogs know something or other animals know something as well. I guess I can turn this a little bit so I'm not totally off the screen. although. We want to keep Dexter over there in the corner because, you know, we can look at him and, instead of looking at me and it's, it's much cuter to watch. But dogs are marking because they're communicating something. So with a dog's urine, it gives the other dogs a lot of information and likely other animals too. Um, you know, it talks about when when they urinate, we know, well not us, but the other dogs can know their sex, they can know their status, their medical history, um, all those kind of things that we can't even imagine. That's also a reason why we see a lot of butt sniffing in dogs because they're getting that information by doing the butt sniffs. So dog marking and peeing on things or peeing and, and when they're introduced to other dogs is just a way for them to communicate. So they're telling the other creatures something. Um, that big something is what we always try to try to figure out. But um, so territorial, so dogs can mark their territory. So you might see a dog who's in their yard and kind of marks the perimeter around the yard or the front of the yard. Um, Dexter, you know, we, we have a walk path in the front of our yard. And so a lot of people are walking their dogs in Dexter's yard, what he thinks of. Um, and we have a pole, a light pole up front, and every dog has got to be peeing on that pole because that's the first thing that he does when I go take him outside to go potty in, in the morning and sometimes in the evening is his nose goes straight up into the air and he goes right over to that pole and then he marks it. So basically he's pretty much telling people that that's his pole, you know, and it's, it's his territory. And it's nothing of behavior. Um, it's actually a way for dogs to avoid conflict. So again, they're kind of claiming their territory instead of, say, fighting, you know. Um, think about the uh, dogs and lions and things like that in the wild, how they do urinate around where, where they live. They're saying, that, that's my zone. Um, so they are actually trying to avoid that conflict there. Um, the other thing about marking is they tend to, some dogs, want to mark things that are new. So maybe you have a new package that came into the house. We just got new furniture. And so I was like, oh, gosh, I hope Dexter doesn't want to, you know, mark that new furniture. Um, and we'll talk about ways to help prevent that, too. But, you know, new furniture, new items, new new coats, you know, they, and, and again, they could be marking it to say this is part of my house. I want to kind of put my scent on it. Um, same thing when you go into different environments. And 
and this is where I think about hotels, you know, us coming up this weekend, you know, you're into a new environment and the dog wants to say, okay, this is my new home for, for the weekend. So I want to make sure that I can go ahead and claim it and, you know, let people know and other animals know that it's mine. So we might have some marking behavior going on at that time as well. Um, the other time that I see a lot of marking for dogs tends to be around some anxiety. So this can be, you know, a displacement signal. The dog's not quite sure what's going on. So kind of like us fiddling with our hair and fiddling with our fingers, it can start kind of marking things. And again, kind of saying, this is where I am. This is who I am. Um, and I'm going to give you in that article also has some links to um, a study that they've actually done on marking. There's a couple studies, um, and we're hopefully doing some more studies as well. But one of the studies showed that when dogs go into a dog park and they're the unknown dogs, that some, the dogs have given the opportunity, most of them will actually go urinate somewhere first to allow the other dogs to come sniff that urine versus coming and doing a butt sniff because again, they wanna kind of tell each other who they are. And if they don't know each other, that interaction, that one-on-one -on -one interaction of two dogs kind of coming up and, and sniffing can be a little, I'm sorry, I'm wobbling my computer, can be a little stressful on the dogs. So by peeing somewhere else and having the dogs go sniff that pee, it's less stressful. Again, we're kind of avoiding that conflict versus being straight on, going on and, and saying hello. So I know that one of the things that I like to do when I'm working with dog clients, especially if they're doing, if there's any kind of dog issues or they're shy and, and that sort of thing, are doing walk past where the dogs walk and then the other dog will follow later so that they can go smell. So one dog walks a little bit and he may sniff and smell and pee and, you know, do that kind of thing. And then that second dog comes after him and walks that path and can sniff and smell and smell that other dog. And then the second dog will then go away or come back around. And then that first dog gets to do the same thing to go smell that second dog. So that both dogs are getting the opportunity. Hi, Christy. <laughs> both dogs are getting the opportunity to smell each other and kind of get to know each other before they actually have to say hi. Um, I obviously also don't do highs right away either, but it's giving the, the two dogs a chance to kind of interact without having that face-to-face -face conflict. Um, the other thing with canine, you know, anxiety and stress and tension is it could be happening in the home too. You know, if you have multiple dogs, which I know I'm in the minority here with only, especially with the Cavalier owners, only having the one dog. Um, but when you have multiple dogs, a lot of time there, there can be some little anxiety stuff going on. And so dogs peeing here and dogs peeing over there. Um, and again, for them, they're not thinking that they're peeing in the house and they're being bad. They're thinking they're just kind of communicating back and forth with, with each other. Um, so they're again, trying to say, this is who I am and this is who I am and, and that sort of thing. Um, again, we'll talk about solutions here too, but just to kind of understand that most of the things that we have problems with with dogs are actually really normal dog behaviors. And sometimes if we just let them do that, then, you know, things can actually resolve themselves. But again, we don't want them peeing all over the house or anything like that. Um, I've got two computers going on here, so I'm trying to figure out which mouse pads which. Um, so the so back to the springboard of this post was about senior dogs all of a sudden marking in, in the house and it being a new behavior. So with any training, you know, when I see or hear a client say that it's new, that they really haven't done it before, that they haven't had any inclination to do it before, a lot of times when a client will say it's new, we can go back into the history and say, well, it's just kind of waiting to happen. You know, we might have some anxiety kind of leading up to it. So we may not have physically peed yet, but there were some other anxiety things that were going on. Um, but if we can't, figure that out if there really doesn't seem to be anything else and it is just new, especially if we're talking about a senior dog, any dog really, but a senior dog, you know, I, I do hit medical, you know, medical tends to be the first thing when things aren't, when something in the environment really hasn't changed, you know, a relationship hasn't changed or anything like that. I, you know, we got to go to the vet. We got to really figure out what's going on. Sometimes we have to be our dog's advocate and really help that vet dig around to kind of figure out that problem. Um, I've not with marking, but with um, a deaf dog, 
um, we figured out that she, we didn't know she was deaf, but she was a senior and she started to have some random anxiety and it ended up because she ended, she was deaf and, and it was a change for her. So she had some stress with trying to deal with that change. So we can, and the dogs, and we the dogs, can manifest that stress into different ways. So a dog may start marking when, when they're stressed, whether you know the dog's in pain and that's different, or again, our cognition's a little different and they're just not sure what's going on. They're just trying to you know maybe make another relationship with the other pack members. So maybe again, if we have multiple dogs and we have one, dog who's you know kind of here on the pack and now we're getting older and maybe we're kind of dropping that that status a little bit which will happen which is fine but that stress of that might be making that dog also mark a little bit as well um, so with with that again the first thing I, I would do is you know go to the vet make sure nothing's going on um, dribbling is different than marking I had someone ask me that earlier. Um, so dribbling is when the dog just kind of can't hold it and just kind of comes out where markings more, it's intentional. You know, they go up to a surface and, and they go to the bathroom. So if we're dribbling, then that's definitely some incontinence that we need to kind of address and, and figure that out. But, you know, marking is, is a bit different. You might have both. So both things might be going on. Um, so that's okay. And let's see here. I just wanted to, whoops, how about you look at Dexter for just a second here. All right. So, did we go on too much there? All right. So, again, with marking, there's usually a reason to it. So, when we're talking about how do we fix these behaviors, it's not usually let's stop the marking. It's usually with behaviors, let's figure out why. You know, it's the why that always needs to be addressed. The marking or barking or humping or any of those kind of things is the, the symptom. You know, it's, it's what we do because of that. So marking, if, if it's inappropriate, if we think it's inappropriate, you know, it's marking in our house, then again, we want to figure out that why and try to address that why. The last thing you want to do during a marking behavior, even if it's in the house, is we don't want to reprimand that dog. You know, reprimanding really doesn't have a place in training anyway. But we really don't want to reprimand that dog because, especially if it's anxiety or things going on between the other other dogs, is that's going to end up making that anxiety even worse. They're going to get more stressed about that behavior. And you're unlikely to stop the marking behavior. What will happen is you'll end up having marking behavior that you don't see. So they're going to be marking and you don't even know it. All of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, you know, the house really stinks. Um, we had an issue with one of our cats a long time ago. We didn't know that it was going outside of the litter box and, until we shut the doors up for the winter. And I was like, whoa, what is that smell? Um, so, you know, again, don't reprimand because we just might end up marking in private so we want to make sure that you know we're, we're figuring that out um hi cynthia it's good to see you and hopefully i'll see you this weekend at novi too um so we want to figure out the why there are things that we can do to help manage things as well you know so if you have a dog and you're really dealing with a lot of marking um it's okay obviously if they go outside to mark and they mark on, on their walks and, and things like that but what I would discourage and again for me discouraging is just keep on moving is is over marking you know you're going for a walk and instead of you know a couple marks here and there he's marking like a thousand times every every second and then we just want to keep walking just like, come on let's go let, let, let's keep on scooting you don't need to pee on everything um, one of the other things I do for Dexter is usually try to discourage him from peeing on stuff that's outside so one I don't want him to pee on other people's stuff but you know like lawn ornaments or you know even the garbage cans that when we go to a park because to me I think of that as kind of stuff and I don't want him to get in the habit of peeing on stuff so we kind of you know stick to the trees or stick to the grass I you know I just try to avoid those other things and again it's just a matter of kind of scooting away um, the other thing that I do very commonly and you might see him on some of Dexter's pictures um, especially when we travel is a belly band um, and a belly band and I have one let's see if I can make it into this video so a belly band I hope this doesn't get too loud but for a boy Oh, we can talk about girls marking too. Girls do mark. So for a boy, it just goes around their belly, around their little pee-pee, and then up and over. So, you know, he'd be in here in his little potty area down here. And so what that does is it catches it. So if he were to lift his leg or to go pee, it's going to catch that pee. Now, I... For me, I don't just put it on and go, okay, I don't have to pay attention to Dexter. He can go pee in his band wherever he wants. It's that 
security that if I don't see him for that second and he does go to lift his leg, especially in a hotel room or someone else's house, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to hit hit the belly band and then I can go oh, shoot, you know, and take it off and clean it. Um, I will say, and then there, it's funny because that's Cynthia there. So I met her at one of the hotels from one of the Cavalier things. And we were talking and, and checking in. And so I actually didn't have the belly band on. I'm usually, I'm, I'm watching him when we're checking in. Um, that's usually not when I, I worry about it. But because I was talking and distracted with Cynthia, Dexter all of a sudden hiked his leg. And I think it was a tree, you know, it was like a big tree in the thing. But, you know, so it surprised me. I wasn't prepared for that. Um, so obviously we, you know, took care of it. But, um, but again, the belly band for Dexter in a hotel or someone's house is to be on for basically that first 15 15, 20 minutes where we're investigating, you know, we're kind of investigating the new hotel and smelling things out. Now, if I, again, I want to try to catch him so that I don't want him to pee in it. And, and he hasn't besides that time with Cynthia. Um, but that nose usually kind of does a quick duck, tuck under. It has this kind of weird little look before they lift up that leg, you know, for boys. Um, I haven't had a girl, I, you know, I've, I've been a boy dog mom, so I haven't really paid attention to how the girls pee for that. So girl girl dog moms have to tell me, um, but they do this little head duck first. And so if I see that head duck, you know, again, I can say, oh, Dexter, come here, you know, and I can redirect that. And, oh, he's still sleeping, sitting here. So I can redirect that so that he doesn't, you know, pee anywhere. Um, and and for the girls, they do make belly bands or little different style because their their potty areas and a little different different things. So it actually has more where the legs go in. So the girls can you know have that too. So hi Barbara. Um, so again, we can do that for the girls. Um, so yeah, girls mark too. So you know the other question was about you know girl dogs marking. You know it's not about you know boy dog girl dog. Remember marking in urine is just a way for dogs to give out other signals to other dogs. So it's just another way for them to say here this is this is who I am. So girl dogs do it as well. Um, and people I think Sue is asking me about neutering. She's got a little boy um, eight nine month old boy dog and, and was going to be getting him neutered. We're holding off a while because you know, we know it's better to hold off for neutering in Spain for the dog. Um, so she's holding off for a little bit and asked if that would make a difference. And it can, it can make a difference, especially if there's any kind of, you know, issue with, with status or, and it's not even so much an issue with the dog that's neutered and his status, but what, how other dogs perceive him. So if we have a, a young dog who's nine months old, you know, he's basically a, a teenage, and if we're talking about, about a boy, a teenage boy. Um, and we know how teenage boys can be, right? And then if we have another dog in the home who's maybe a five, six-year-old adult dog, and we have this teenage whippersnapper coming around with full hormones, that other dog might have some more issues with them because he's unneutered. So that's usually where we'll kind of see, you know, the marking. Um, so maybe even Sue's dog, we might even be, I think, I don't remember if it's the only dog or not, but we might be having some, you know, issues going going that way too. So um, I wouldn't neuter or not neuter a, a pet. Oh, he woke up a pet because of urine marking. Um, again, I just work a little bit more on training and figuring out kind of um, what's going on. So, um, so those are some of the common reasons that dogs mark and some of the things that we can do to, to figure out what's going on. Um, again, you want to figure out that relationship, you know, marking if, if you have multiple dogs and there's a lot of marking going on in the house. Um, a lot of times it's that, that issue of, of what their relationship is. So that's what you're going to have to address. Um, it's not the, the marking itself. It's the issue. Now that said, if, if we have, you know, in the house and everyone's marking the same thing, it stinks, you know, it smells like pee. So we might want to get rid of that piece of, of furniture or, or really find out how to clean that so it doesn't smell as much um, to try to, you know, look at that. You might, again, pro prohibit the dogs from getting to that area, um, especially while you're kind of working on that. So that's all I had, and I appreciate you guys that are here live with me. And again, thank you guys for coming. And the, oh, now Dexter's going to wake up. See, what's he doing? He's going to change. Can't, he's going up on the big bed now. So we will see you guys later. Thanks for joining.